So I'm back up here where everything happened with Suzy Q. This is the work area that we were in previously where we originally built that car. But I would like to show you guys what we're about to build next. So I've already started on some of the stuff that it's gonna take to do this project in the way that I wanna do it. Pretty similar to what we've already done, but handling it a little bit differently. So without further ado, here she is. So I know you guys are sitting there like, man, what are you doing with a early 90s Buick Regal? <laughs> well, here's the thing. I got inspired by this guy's video the other day where he was talking about the fact that, I mean, he was checking out a Buick Regal GS, like a 2002 or something like that. And he was talking about the fact that this Buick Regal right here was the last body style of Buick Regal that was actually truly a Buick other than being on the W body platform, which a lot of them shared it, so on and so forth. But Buick V6, Buick, Buick, Buick. I mean, the next generation of Buick Regal was the Opal platform. Same with the most recent generation of it. And there's just something about these things that holds a special place in my heart. I mean, my, my great grandma, she had a black Buick Regal GS, so, or, or LS, I'm sorry. Literally the same exact car, but black with the, uh, I think it had the gray interior in it. But either way, here's the deal. This thing is going to allow me to take this jig that I put underneath the car and easily do future conversions to W bodies. I'm just weird like that. I really like these cars as far as the W body, early 2000s front wheel drive GM stuff. So this jig will allow me to do the Monte Carlos, to do the Grand Prix, to do the Intrigues, the Impalas, anything that was on this generation of W body underside, which is like from 97, up to like 2014 or something like that in the Impalas. Um, and, and it'll work with all of them. So this jig is to help put the wheels where they need to be. So it literally attaches to just the rear subframe mounting points. It's gonna be tricky to get all this thing removed uh, with the factory subframe in here, but I had to design it in a way that all of this was placed properly. So overall, it's not load bearing, it's not structural. I made these things so they can slide and there's gonna be a pin or two probably in this thing so that this can slide out because the Mustang's rear track width is a little bit wider. And I think the front might be a little bit narrower. Anyways, the thing is, I just wanted to take something kind of quirky, pick this thing up for 250 bucks, and we're gonna turn this engine in the right direction. And we're gonna try to capture the vibe or the general, you know, recipe of what a Buick Grand National was, which was a Regal with a turboed 3.8 in it. Granted, the 3800 is a little bit different than the 3.8 that was in that, but you get the point. Suzy Q, the previous build, if you haven't checked that out, go back and check out the previous videos of the Red Grand Prix. The car is still kicking, but I just have a thing for building things. You know, we tried going to the drag strip a bunch of times. It's a lot of fun, but this is what I'm really passionate about. It's about building these weird, quirky, one-off type of things. We're gonna call this car the Granny National. So we're gonna take this four-door old lady Buick and we're gonna turn it into something that catches the attention of people. To be able to take a car that nobody cares about and you just pass by one probably every day, at this point they're still out there, um, and never pay any mind to it. To have one that's going to be hopefully anywhere from 400 to 500 wheel horsepower to the rear wheels, it should be pretty fun. So we're gonna get rolling on this thing. I gotta rip it down to bare body. I know the modifications that need to be done. I do not have the Mustang donor car yet. And a lot of people have asked, why not use Camaro stuff? Why not use G8 stuff, CTS stuff, anything like that? It's just, it's not the proper design. It's not quite set up the way that this body is going to accommodate it properly. Like if you watch the videos on Suzy Q, you'll see just how ridiculously close the Mustang stuff is to the W body. Now, granted the back wheels, the track width kind of sucks because it's a little bit too wide for this body. So it makes it difficult for aftermarket wheels or whatever. You gotta have a really high offset wheel to be able to keep it from sticking out too much. But the thing about it is it works really well. 
And if you look at Copart, there is an abundance of wrecked Mustangs, and I wonder why. It, it, it's gonna be really cool. I hope you guys can tag along with it. We already know the modifications that we need to do to the body. We're gonna get this thing torn apart. We're gonna get those done. As soon as the Mustang stuff gets here, we're gonna pop this jig back underneath of it, get those things in position, and we're gonna move right through this. So hopefully it won't take too long to do. Um, but either way, we're not gonna know how long it takes unless we get into it and get this thing torn apart. So let's get at it. Now that it's mostly been reduced to a pile of parts, we can look at what we're gonna have to do. I still have to take apart the interior, and then I got the, all the lines that run to the back gotta come out. Gotta get this electrical stuff out, get all that off. We're gonna clean all this up. But up here, just like the Grand Prix, these little turn-in areas have to be removed, and it has to be flat versus kicking out like that. And that's on both sides. This side isn't as extreme, but it still has to be done over here too. And then, this bump in the firewall, which is where the AC box kind of bumps into, that's also having to be removed. There's no way of really being able to fit something up here the way that we need to with that there. Really, overall, the car is in pretty good shape. Obviously, there's our engine. We're gonna strip this thing all down. Probably go with the uh, Camaro or F-body style intake manifold on it, and then uh, forward-facing headers with the turbo. I'm gonna look into doing an LS coil conversion hopefully gonna cam it do a few things to it to spruce it up it's gonna need that to get the power that I'm wanting back here if we look underneath get a good look at what needs to be done these plates have to get removed which is where the kind of the I don't know the, the strut tower kind of combines with this low area that whole thing has to get removed right there this cross brace right here has to get completely removed just because with it in there there's not enough room for the Mustang's upper part of its subframe to fit up into. And then behind this, you can't really see it on this side, you can just barely see it. But that hole right there, if everything lines up like it did on the Grand Prix, which in theory it should, that's going to be exactly where the rear subframe bolt hole for the Mustang subframe has to go, which is just insane so this uh this area up here gets structured in a little bit just give it a little bit more beef to kind of hold up a little bit better i just put a big quarter inch plate on the back side of this and then building off of this has to be a little shelf a little bracket part to hold the front mustang subframe bolts and then obviously we're gonna have to do a whole lot with getting a tunnel through here and everything else and then the entire spare wheel well has to come out and then we have to cut out this this kind of droop back here, this dip down, because the fuel cell or the fuel tank will go back here instead of being up there, which I could probably come up with some sort of saddle tank design or something to be able to use that space because even on the Grand Prix, that's pretty much completely open. But, uh, you know, overall, looks pretty good under here. I mean, this thing is as clean as a whistle. It is unfortunate it has the uh, little bit of dents and everything else that it has, but I couldn't ask for a cleaner underside which was kind of the same scenario with Susie Q's obviously you get a little bit here and there but we're talking about a 23 year old car here's our old subframes gotta load them up in the truck get it all out of here gonna have to find some new fenders and then uh again we're gonna have to do some stuff with these quarter panels this side's a little bit worse than the other pretty big dent there but I think the next thing I'm gonna do is get that interior apart and then uh you know we'll kind of go from there Thank you. 
All right, so there's the dash. Woo! I gotta tell you, the thing's not light when you have all that stuff in there and you're trying to do this by yourself, but wide open. The thing is spectacularly clean. This is gonna be great. Um, a lot of water in that insulation there, but I gotta tell you, it is hot in here. So we're gonna get the doors removed. I'm gonna leave the headliner like I usually do. And then um, take his back seat out. I just couldn't fold this up so you guys could be sitting right there. But anyways, once we get that out, I'll pull all this wiring out, but I'll, I'll do that off camera. So let's get the doors popped off and then uh, call it a day on this one. disassembled well at least for you guys we are so I gotta rip the back seat out get the carpeting out of the trunk that's not a big deal otherwise I'm just gonna drop the uh, brake lines and fuel lines that are under it and then uh, I get these out of the way so I'm not dangling on my face but obviously in here we already know what we got to do this has to get raised up essentially um, not to create a whole new tunnel Susie Q I, I set the engine way back which we've been over that on the previous videos where it was being placed relative to the subframes rather than relative to what looks right in the car. Because again, there's a lot of structural differences between a front wheel drive car and a rear wheel drive car. And it actually influences the way that the cars look. You know, you may not realize that, but if you pay attention, you'll see what I mean when you look at the front wheels and the distance of the front of the door to the uh, back of the wheel. It's a lot smaller on a front wheel drive, a lot longer on a uh, rear wheel drive car. So anyways, I can go on and on. That'll do it for this one. Um, I did make some Granny National t-shirts. If you guys wanna check that out, it'll be in the description down below. Every shirt bought obviously contributes to doing this whole project. Next time we'll pick back up on this. We're gonna do obviously the modifications that we know have to be done in order to fit the stuff that we need. And then obviously I gotta get a hold of a Mustang donor car. Otherwise we're looking pretty good. This thing's clean as a whistle. I'm gonna catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.